you know, we are not anti-aluminium. We absolutely respect the many ways in which aluminium has contributed positively to all of our lives. This is not an issue with us. We're not anti-aluminium. Mm. But whenever you introduce something into, your, into life and into you know, the, particularly something which is going to be, uh, you expose humans to, you would normally make sure that it's safe first. That would be the first thing you do. In fact, for almost everything else you can think of, you have to do that. You have to demonstrate that something is safe first. That has never been necessary for aluminium. It has never been demonstrated that aluminium is safe. No, there's never been any legislation mm. in order to do that. And this is a historical thing. My understanding of aluminium and aluminium in living things and therefore human beings is that you know, while aluminium is the most abundant element on the earth, in the earth's crust, for the almost all of biochemical evolution, it was excluded from the process because of its interactions primarily with silicon. We've shown that when silicon binds aluminium, it's non-toxic. That was, that's why the earth and life evolved on, the, on an earth's crust made of aluminium, silicon and oxygen so successfully because these three elements were, were together. Man, only 120, 30 years ago, learned how to take that aluminium, silicon and oxygen and turn it into aluminium metal and aluminium salts and heralded the aluminium age. So our earth, living things on the earth and humans primarily we're talking about, have only been experiencing aluminium, biologically reactive aluminium, for 120, 150 years.